We just hope that it's going to occur sometimes. But Jesus said, as you go, put together a plan to help people come to know me and to walk in my truth. A very specific plan. Now, here in western Colorado, there's a lot of horses and horse trainers and all like that out there. And I've got a friend that started a cowboy church in Fruta. He's a horse trainer. Neat, neat guy. I think maybe some of you might have even met Colton Walter. Great, great guy. And Colton and I were talking about this. And I said, Colton, what would happen if you just said, well, I think I'll do this with this horse today, and this horse I'll do something else with, and maybe I'll do something with this one. Could you get by with that, with that horse? Could you turn that back over to the owner, a fully trained, safe horse? No. But basically, guys, that's what we do with spiritual, godly discipleship. We need to be more specific. We need to have a plan. And the plan for this young man is going to be different than the plan for that young man. And this gentleman back over here and this lady back over here, they're going to be different. I've got to think as the discipler, what does this person need? How do I move them through? How do I help grow them? How can I help make this sure that when they go out into the world that they go out mature? We do that with our kids sometimes. But that's basically what we're supposed to do. Now it goes on and it says this. Now listen to this very carefully. Thus there is no disciple without a teacher. I don't disciple myself. You don't disciple yourself. I still do not even disciple myself. I have men that I love and that I trust and that we sharp, iron sharpens iron. And we get into talks, and we, we talk about the scriptures. We talk about books. We help each other to grow in the concepts and the truth that God has given to us out of his word. I will never stop growing. You will never stop growing if that's something that you desire. You never have a disciple. You never have a mathetes without a didaskalos. You never have a disciple without a teacher. Amen? So the first thought, and I have, I have 15 or 20. The first thought, and they're all about this long. The first thought then is that we are commanded to make disciples. Did you get that? It's not an option. It's assumed you're going, and while you're going, make disciples. Now the second thing that I want you to see is that we have a desire to see people come to Christ. Do you have a desire to see people come to Christ? I heard that when I put that slide up there that said there was 898,000 people that were baptized last year, and I heard, ooh. Well, what that means to me is, do you have a desire to see people come to Jesus Christ, just like you did? You know the joy that's there. You know the, the strength that's there. You know the power that's there. And so you desire that other people would have that same. In 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 through 8, and I'm going to read these for you. You can turn there, you can just write them down. It says this, First of all, then, I urge that entreaties and prayers and petitions and thanksgiving be made on behalf of all men, for kings and all who are in authority, so we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. Now listen, this is the key verse right here, verse 3. It says, This is good and acceptable in the sight of of God our Savior, now listen, who desires that all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of truth. Who desires that? God does. God desires that how many men would come to know him? All men. Now, the Bible also tells us that when we accept Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, that he comes in to live in us. Amen? Colossians chapter 1 says, Christ in me is the hope of glory. Christ in me. It's not me anymore. It's Christ in me. And so if Christ lives in me, and it's his desire that all men would come to know him as personal Lord and Savior, then where does that leave me? Doesn't that make me 
that, doesn't that make it my desire also? Now, I can quench that desire, but that's not, that's not living the Christian life. Amen? Okay? So if it's God's desire and he's living through me, then it's my desire that I see that all men would come to know him. We have a desire, something that's innate in us. It is who we are. It is why we live. It's why we get up in the morning. You think you get up in the morning to go to work. You think you get up in the morning to have a family. You think you're getting up in the morning just because you live in a beautiful place. But you're getting up in the morning every morning of your life because Christ wants to get up and he wants to talk to somebody about himself. Okay? But we don't really think about it on a daily basis like that, do we? But we need to. We need to. We need to wa wake up. Whoa, 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 whoa. Got my tang tongue there for a minute. We need to wake up in the morning and say, Jesus, talk to somebody today about yourself. Use my mouth. Use my ears. Use my hands. Use my feet. If you need to get someplace, use my car. It's yours anyway. Use my mouth. It's yours anyway. Says he bought us, doesn't it? Okay. Bought us with his blood. I think we just sang a song like that. Okay. And if that's true, then he owns my mouth, he owns my ears, he owns my hands, he owns my legs, and so he can do any stinking thing he wants with them if I let him. And that's really the key, isn't it? Because many of us get up in the morning and say, man, I hope he doesn't lead me to somebody today because I don't have the answers. Jesus, who do you want to talk to using my mouth today? Who do you want to look at using my eyes today? Where do we need to walk today? Use my body. It's yours in any aspect that you want to. It's exciting. It's exciting to allow God to use you. Have you ever had that experience? Isn't that some of the most joyous times that you have? When God gets a hold of your life and, and all of a sudden you're, you're talking to somebody and pretty soon you walk away and go, where did that all come from? <laughs> Amen? Okay. Wow, that was cool. You get done with teaching a Sunday school class or something, and you go, wow, I didn't think I knew all that. I don't know where that all came from. We have a desire an innate, born-again desire in us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. But he doesn't leave us with just a desire. He doesn't leave us with just a desire. Acts chapter 1, verses 7 through 9. And I'm, I'm going to read them to you. You can write them down if you want to. It says this. It is not for you to know times or epics which the Father has fixed by his authority. Now listen. But you shall receive what? Power! You know what that word comes from? It comes from the word dunamis, which we get our word dynamite. What does dynamite do? Blows up. And it's loud. It can't be dynamite like this. It's powerful. So he said, I'm going to give you a desire because I live in your life, but I know that in and of yourself that you're going to go, oh, I'm too shy. I don't know enough. Oh, I hope nobody asks me a question when I go to church. Oh. <laughs> and you all are laughing, but that's you. In one scenario or another, that's you. And it's because we don't appropriate the power that he's given to us. You are an explosive personality. Some people, not me. <laughs> you are an explosive personality, not because of who you are and not because of the personality that you have, but it's Christ in you. He's the hope of glory. See? 
It's not us. There's a really good book. If you want a really good book to read, it's called The Saving Life of Christ by Ian Thomas. Very easy read. There's a chapter in there about Moses and about Abraham and about Paul. And you know what the name of the chapter is? Any old bush will do. Any old bush will do. He doesn't need your beauty. And he doesn't need your money. And he doesn't need your works. He wants to use you. That's all. Okay. Now, for guys like me that are really good looking and wealthy, <laughs> talented, you know, and all like that, great, marvelous speakers throughout the whole world, you know, and you can tell I'm being really facetious with you. Okay. We've got it made. I don't, and, and, we could, and many do, guys, think they've got it made. They can do the job. They don't really need Jesus. And when we get to that point, you'll fall flat on your face. Okay. Been reading Billy Graham's autobiography. It's called Just As I Am. If you've never read that, it's a great read, phenomenal read. It's a devotion in itself. And it, it's just marvelous. And, and as I've been reading that, the one thing I'm struck by is the prayer partners that he had and how he depended on it. He said, I 